All right, uh, Wilds, uh, I, uh, I might owe you an apology, but here we go. At number five, <laughs> Kyler Murray. All right, a lot has been made about the head coach Cliff Kingsbury falling off at the end of the season, right? His teams do it every year. But Kyler's falling off as well. They've lost three straight games, two touchdowns, three picks in those games. Now, Arizona has sewn up a playoff burst, so they've got that. He doesn't have to worry about that. But they're playing horribly, and if they're going to do anything in the postseason, they need Kyler to return to Pro Bowl form, the form that he showed in winning their first seven games. going to be tough, though. Dallas, one of the hottest defenses in the league, and leads it in takeaways. That's the rest. At number four, Carson Wentz. Nick, you are the president of the Carson Wentz Haters Club. You're the president of a few of those clubs, but he's one of them. And you're not alone, though. Everybody loves the Colts, the head coach, the offensive line, the defense, Jonathan Taylor. They love everything about the Colts except Carson Wentz, all right? Carson has already silenced a lot of his naysayers by playing every game this season. This is only the third time in his six years that he's done that. Let's see if he continues and finishes off the season like that. But he can silence his other naysayers by going out and clinching a playoff berth this weekend against the Raiders for the Indianapolis Colts. All right, at number three, Justin Herbert. He is everybody's favorite young quarterback just a few weeks ago. In fact, somehow he beat out Patrick Mahomes as the starter for the AFC in the Pro Bowl. But now they are in serious danger of not making the playoff. They got to win the next two games likely to make it. And they've lost the last two. He's thrown six picks in his last five games. And that started with a two-pick game against Denver. That's who they play this weekend. And last week's loss was, I'm sorry, unforgivable. You can't lose to the Houston wow. Texans, the four-win Texans. Throw two picks when you're trying to make the playoffs. All right, at number two, we got as Wilds, I'm sorry, Matt Jones. Come on. Man. Baby Goat, TBG. Matt 10, uh, MJ 10, McCorkle. It seems like he's got more nicknames. I know that's his real name, but he got more nicknames in December than he does touchdown passes, all right? He started okay. high. They won seven straight. They're nine and four. 16 tugs, as the players like to call them. Eight picks. That's it. That was great. Well, last two games, two touchdowns and four picks. He ain't looking good, Wiles. And I like McCorkle, to use Nick's term. But he's got to step it up. If he struggles against Jacksonville, if he struggles against Jacksonville, then you might have something to worry about. Justin Edelman, one of your favorite Patriots legends, uh, Wiles, he said he thinks he's hit the rookie wall. It'll uh, Julian Edelman, oh. I'm sorry. One of your favorite Julian Patriots, he, he said yep. he hit the wa- rookie wall. He could be right if uh, he struggles against Jacksonville. All right, at number one, Baker Mayfield. Back off the COVID list and back atop the bud list. It's it's where he lives. And, you know, usually when when you hear that one player costs the team the game, it's an overstatement, right? But it was actually true last week. The defense for the Browns, great against Green Bay. The running game, Nick Chubb, great against Green Bay. They only lost by two points, 24-22. And Baker threw four interceptions, including one that killed a potential game-winning drive. Uh, Look, it's been a horrible year. The injuries, the underachievement for him and the team, his friend and wide receiver, OBJ leaves him in unflattering fashion, no contract extension. It's just bad. He can salvage it, though. By winning these last two games, starting Monday at Pittsburgh and getting the Browns into the playoffs. So, Baker, this is for motivational reasons. You top the bud list. Broussard, this is a good list. You did a good job here. I have won a revision. But first, I would like to alert the audience of something. Look at these pictures we're using. So there's Kyler pointing out, you know, hey, run there, I'm going to throw it to you. Wentz dropping back to pass. Herbert getting ready to throw a laser. Baker is tucked and run. He's pointing out blockers. 
The only picture we could find of Mac Jones is handing the ball off. They're like, hey, we need a Mac Jones action shot, America. And it's like, oh, well, I guess he's handing the ball off because that's all the Patriots want him to do, which is why I don't think what you said about Justin Herbert was fair. The, the Tex- Losing to the Texans is a disaster. But they lost because the defense made Davis Mills look like a Hall of Famer and allowed Oh, God, was it Rex Burkhead, the running back, to go for 100-plus yep. yards? They ran for 190. To me, that was more about the Chargers' defense. So I would take Herbert off, and I would put an extra McCorkle fixture. And here's why. I mean, because Mac, doing? it's not just <laughs> Mac, the, Mac on the field. It's Mac off the field that we have to be worried about. So Mac on the field right now is having statistically – a year slightly worse than Tua Tungavailoa and almost identical to the great quarterbacks such as Jared Goff and what's less left of Ben Roethlisberger. Look at the numbers, by the way, of Roethlisberger, Goff, and McCorkle. And what you're going to see is they're almost identical across the board. But here's why he deserves to be on there twice. He's on there in Broussard's spot wilds for his play on the field. I'm putting his... his football mental state under duress because we have increasing evidence from his play and from his press conferences that that Bills game with three passes broke whatever mojo he had going. Mm. He was coming off his two best performances Mm. of the year, the team was rolling, and then Bill Belichick on national television made the entire world acutely aware of what I've been saying all year. We don't trust our quarterback. And since then, he's played like a guy who doesn't trust himself. So I think he deserves to be on there doubly. I agree with Baker under the most duress. But after that, it's Mac Jones by far, Wilds. There's nothing worse than a take that you hate going into your ear. And at the same time, it registers in your brain. And there's a little angel on my shoulder saying, it does make kind of sense, Wilds. It drives me insane. So just, I, I'm, I'm not, it's, it's all right. But when he goes toe to toe with the number one draft pick, with a guy that was a, a can't miss guy, hadn't seen a prospect like him in decades since young Peyton Manning, I want everyone to bring multiple bouquets of flowers and lay them at Mac Jones' hooves or my feet. Say, Kevin, you were right. He is better than Trevor Lawrence. I am putting Joe Burrow on the list, and there's nothing I want more on God's green earth than for Joe Burrow to light up that Chiefs defense. Oh, it make me so happy. And the reason, Broussard, I'm putting him <laughs> on the list is because he had 525 yards against the Ravens, set the Bengals' record. And they said, yeah. hey, Joe, w- when the Ravens' coaches said, hey, don't fit him for a, a, a gold jacket just yet, did that upset you? He was like, yeah, that was a little bit of motivation. So I said, oh, if that guy can throw for 525, if, if Ravens coaches are saying he's not ready to go to the Hall of Fame yet, imagine what he will do if I put him on the bud list. So I, I don't think he's playing at all poorly, but I want to give him a little it's bit of extra good. motivation to beat the Chiefs. It's, you just I, want it, him to it's beat a the twist Chiefs? on the bud list. Yes, badly. <laughs> well, Wilds, you hit on something. Because Nick's motivation was for the Chiefs as well. Because he doesn't remember who's the team he fears most in the AFC playoffs. The Chargers. And he knows the motivational powers of the Bud List. He doesn't want Justin Herbert getting motivated. How in the world does Herbert not deserve to be on the list? All right, they've lost two straight. I get it. They put up 29 against the Texans. Yeah, but look, if if the situation calls for it, Get more than 29 against the Texans. They give up 27 on average. Get a little more than that if you're really that guy. You don't want Herbert playing better and winning down the stretch and getting his team in the playoffs and facing your Chiefs. That's why you don't want him on the Bud list. I get it. It's a smart move by you. absolutely correct. And Wiles, good explanation on Burrow. I was wondering where you're going because he's been playing great football. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from First Things First or go watch a few segments from our other shows on FS1.